ծանցության եւ ծանր բահերին քեզ եմ հիշում դու իմ վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաղթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's begin by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and let's say Amen. This month, our primate, Archbishop Hovnan Derderian, has proclaimed it as an opportunity for us to remember a very special individual, His Holiness of Blessed Memory, Vazgen I, who was the Catholicos of all Armenians, from 1955 to 1994, representing one of the longest reigns of any Catholicoi in the Armenian Church tradition. He was a very special individual and certainly worthy of our attention, this being the 20th year of his passing. Many of us grew up under his shadow, and for generations to come, I'll tell you a very interesting story that just last month, I was in, the, in one of the churches in Yerevan giving a sermon and during the course of my sermon I remembered his holiness of blessed memory Vazgen the first and the people around me they started making the sign of the cross so revered was this catholicos so in generations to come he will always be remembered as a very special individual who brought the armenian church to age It was a very difficult time. It was post-genocide time. It was in the height of the Cold War. It was Soviet times. And you know the Soviet doctrine is one of atheism. And yet Vazgen I, this incredible man, was able to keep not only the doors of Etchmiadzin open, but keep the doors of many of the Armenian churches open and reopened. He was able to, re, to, to bring together uh, new students who became part of the Kevorkian Seminary. I was there. I was one of those students during that time. And those of us who lived during that time remember this, this, uh, this incredible human being who really governed with love, with love in his heart toward God, toward Christ his Savior, and toward the Armenian Church, the body of Christ. Many times when we refer to His Holiness, we think of someone in an ancient church, and we fail to re remember that he was part of the modern times. And the stories that we have of him sometimes are only designated to Armenia and the life of Armenians. But His Holiness was actually the first Catholicos to come to America on an unofficial capacity. He came three times in 1960, 1968, and in 1987. And I want to speak to those times because it's important that we realize as Armenian Christians today, the Armenian Church is international. It's not just in Armenia, but the Armenian Church is everywhere that the diaspora is. And certainly we here in the, Ar in the Armenian Church here in America understand our position and understand that this church that we have here, a hundred years, it's been here since the time of the genocide, but it has roots to that ancient church, but it has a function right now. And His Holiness, Vazgen I, was one who made certain that we understood that we were part of that church and that part of that community. I want to share with you a couple stories that were very important because when you hear stories of, of His Holiness, you hear them in, in settings that are far removed. How about some settings right here in the Los Angeles area? Well, it was 1960 when His Holiness decided that it was going to, he was going to pay his first pontifical and spiritual visit to the United States, and he decided to come to the Los Angeles area. And of course, you can imagine what a fanfare. People were just so excited to see him. After all, the Catholicos, the supreme patriarch of all Armenians was coming right here to America, to Los Angeles. And people got themselves ready. And, uh, you know, we, we hear so many stories about famous celebrities coming in our mix. This was the famous, the most famous celebrity that was going to visit the community. His, his flock, 
in the Los Angeles area. And so, rightly so, the leadership of that time here in this area, they got together and they rented the Shrine Auditorium so that he could celebrate the Divine Liturgy. The Shrine Auditorium, you probably know where that is because in the days of past, it was used as the place where Many movie stars assembled for the Academy Awards. Yes, they gave out the Academy Awards at the Shrine Auditorium. It had a long history of being this place where gatherings would take place of significant importance. And so the leadership here in Los Angeles area rented the Shrine Auditorium where His Holiness would come and he would celebrate the Divine Liturgy, the Holy Badarak. Well, it was on that Sunday morning that he arrived at the Shrine Auditorium and His Holiness uh, got there in his, with his entourage of priests, of bishops. And His Holiness came out of the car that day to enter the Shrine Auditorium. And he looked up on top of the Shrine Auditorium. Guess what he saw? The symbol of the star and crescent. And His Holiness looked up at him and he said, I cannot serve the divine liturgy under those symbols. Those symbols, which were very prominent during the time of the genocide, after all, they, these are the symbols that are on the Turkish flag. And without paying any respect to political correctness, as people would do today, it was a matter of principle for His Holiness. He could not let Armenian churches be empty that morning and him serving the divine liturgy under those symbols. Those symbols which meant the death of one and a half million Armenians during the genocide of the 20th century. And so His Holiness refused on grounds of a principle. Now, I'm saying this because today we, we make, we bend rules. We look around, we talk about political correctness. Well, that's okay. Let's do it. There's thousands of people assembled here. Let's not, let's not rock the boat. His Holiness said, it's a matter of principle. The Armenian church cannot be empty while I'm serving here. And so he got himself back into the car along with the entourage, along with the thousands of people, they moved over to the old St. James Church, the one on Adams. If you go by there, Arlington and Adams, you'll see that church is still there. They moved the entire congregation and the clergy to the West Adams St. James, and that's where he celebrated the Holy Badarak, the Divine Liturgy. Now, I'm saying this story because we got to remember that when we honor an individual, it's not about a person, it's not about his birth date, his death, death date, it's about the character, what Martin Luther King alluded to, and he said it is the content of the character that is important, not the outward appearance. And His Holiness was a man of character. His Holiness was a man of principle and something that really disrupted an entire community. He wasn't scared of disrupting that because it was a matter of principle. His Holiness was this kind of man. During the 1950s when he was elected, the church was in turmoil. It was in shambles. During the 1960s and 70s, he saw his church being divided even further along political lines. And he wept. He, he mourned the suffering of his people. During the 1980s, he saw the destruction of the earthquake in Spitak. And he was one that was the first person that was out there, one of the first responders with help. And then in 1991, when the, the, when the Republic of Armenia received its independence, he was proclaimed as a hero and he received the first passport issued by that republic. In other words, the passport of freedom. He oversaw five times the blessing of Holy Miron, that life-giving and liberating holy oil that is anointed upon the forehead of priests, of bishops, and every child that is born in the Armenian church. He was a pontiff who was also a father, a father to many. 
We remember him with such sweet memories in our lives. I remember as a student taking classes with him where he taught. He actually taught in the seminary to the graduating class of students. He taught the, the art of giving sermons, powerful sermons. He taught psychology because that was his forte during the time. That's what he had studied and he was passing it along to new generations. The last time he came to the United States was in 1987. We have very fond memories of His Holiness at the Hollywood Bowl. Now this was unusual. An open air divine liturgy where we placed the Vemkar there and His Holiness came and among thousands of faithful people he delivered a stirring sermon. A sermon which you've got to remember 1987, just a few years before independence, but still under the, the flag of the Soviet regime, he understood that it wasn't about the politics. It was the message of Christ, the message of hope, the message of faith that had to reach to his people. And he reached out with his words. He reached out with that beautiful personality that he had, with that beautiful smile that he had. And he touched the hearts of many of us. That day at the Hollywood Bowl, you could imagine when we received communion, we were not only communing with Christ our Savior, we were communing with a, with a tradition of 2,000 years of people who had been saved because of Christ. We were communing with Vartanans, we were communing with the, with the big saints of our church, with Shnorhali and Datevatsi, and we were communing with His Holiness Vazgen I. I am one of those fortunate priests that received the name Vosgen. I was ordained 27 years to the date that His Holiness took office as our, our Supreme Pontiff. To me, this is an honor that is unlike any other. Vosgen I was a Catholicos, was a bishop, was a priest unlike others. He was one of principle. He was one of character. He was one who wasn't scared, but he also understood how to be flexible, how to be flexible not in matters of faith, but in matters of relationships, by letting love guide his thoughts and his actions. When he saw something that was going wrong in the Armenian church, he wept because he knew that where there is no love, there isn't great disappointment. Of course he had great disappointment in seeing the despair of his people, seeing his church being split apart, but he knew that love conquers all. And it was with that love that he moved forward. Today we have an opportunity, and I thank our bishop, Archbishop Hovland Derderian for giving us this opportunity for us to remember somebody who touched our lives in a very, very unique way. I want to conclude by the words of Holy Scripture. And these are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, A new wine, new wine is not put into old wineskin. If it is, the skin bursts and the wine is spilled and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins so that both are preserved. In the olden times, they didn't have those bottles. They had wineskins. And the acids of the wines would eat away at those wineskins. So you wouldn't put new wine in an old wineskin because it would, be, it would deteriorate. And this is the message that I have for you. We have new Catholicoi. We have new bishops. Life is changing, life is evolving, and we have to go along with it. Let's remember that we have a beautiful tradition that touches us even today, touches us even here in America, that we are the new wine. And that new wine is not defined only with the past, but with opportunities for us to show our perseverance, to show our character today in the real world that we live in. After all, this show is called Armenian Christianity today. It has to do with all of our past, all of our faith, and applying it today. Vazgen Vehapar was somebody who was that new wine. He took on that old wine skin and he defeated it by preserving something very, very special to us. Let's make sure that we're worthy of, to be called children of the Armenian Church and keep that dream going, keep that beautiful tradition going in our faith, 
in the way we deal with it, others and being inspired by leadership such as Vazgen the first leadership that show us what courage was showed us what tenacity was but also the flexibility and humility of a loving individual may god rest his soul may he continue to inspire not only us but generations to come and in all things let's remember to give praise and glory for the reason that he inspires us because we give thanks to the father the son and the holy spirit and say amen